I think that that's one of the real challenges, right? If you're clear about your metrics, if you're clear about being results oriented versus FaceTime oriented, then I think you don't worry as much about that. But one of the things that's really critical when you think about, you know, the schedule that people have, the key from my perspective from a man, that a manager should care about is, does the person need to coordinate with other people? If they're on a team and they need to coordinate with other, other people to get their work done, it's really, really important to have that person available at, at, in a window, which is also uh, acceptable to the other people on the team, right? So you have to have shared time. As long as, and so as a manager, what I would recommend is that you make sure that employees structure shared time if they are on, if they have a team uh, related output that they need to work on. There's certainly going to be people who are also more at risk, right? And so if you're somebody who's immunocompromised or has a certain category of risk, that's also going to need to be a consideration, right? In terms of whether you or your perhaps you're the only support for a parent who has some one of those risks risk factors right and so some of these considerations i think are going to be very very important for organizations and managers to respect but i that brings back one of the biggest challenges that the research has always found on work from home which is the biggest barrier for people being able to work from home effectively is the direct supervisor. So right. a company can have a policy around this, but if the direct supervisor frowns upon it, that's still a problem. That's still going to be a barrier for people. And so what organizations need to realize is that this has to be in the culture. Uh, this has to be really um, deeply understood by the managers as well, not just policy that they give access to. Something I've been studying for many years, the, the, the kind of preference for segmentation or segmenters, people who like to keep work and home separate. Whereas integrators are the kinds of people who prefer to blur the boundary. They don't mind sort of the, you know, kids pictures in their office or, you know, taking a work call at home, that kind of thing. And, you know, so I've been studying these, these types of folks for years. And in this new work from home reality that we're living in, it's particularly challenging for segmenters, people who like to keep a sharp line between work and home. We can't do that right now even if we want to. This is where basically the rubber hits the road and all the, our two worlds are colliding like crazy. We have, you know, kids who are doing online school. They're, you know, they're wandering into the room to, to get something. Uh, you know, you've got a spouse or a partner who is also trying to get work done from home. Sometimes you have clashing conference calls. Sometimes you both need the high definition video camera, uh, you know, other times you can kind of make trade offs. And so these are the kinds of challenges that we really inevitably are facing in the pandemic work from home reality. That's not always the case with work from home, but it's really a big challenge now. For people who are segmenters, there's, there's a lot of, of work that they need to actively do to be more comfortable in this type of an environment. And that involves doing two things, really thinking about your, how you use your time and thinking about how you um, structure your space. And so from a time perspective, a segmenter is going to be much better off if they stick to a routine or a schedule, right? They, they, they kind of make a plan in the morning. They, they, it's probably a, a routine for them as well. Um, they, you know, have a ritual where they, 
you know, transition into their work mode. Uh, they're not lounging around in PJs all day. They're not setting up in the middle of the kitchen, right, like I am. I'm, by the way, in the middle of my kitchen because I'm an integrator. It doesn't bother me as much. You know, I've had many meetings where my kids walk walk behind me, right, and get a snack out of the out of the cabinet. But a lot of people, but a lot of people who are not as comfortable with that, they shouldn't be setting up in the middle of the kitchen. They should have a room that's off to the side where it's they can close the door, they can lock it, and you know they can preserve the sanctity of their space. The second piece, uh, and, and so that's the that's the space piece of it, right? So there's the time in terms of the routine, and then there's the space that you choose. This is an opportunity. I mean, it's definitely a challenge for all of us, but it's also an opportunity. It presents us an opportunity as business leaders to really think carefully, as I mentioned before, about those metrics. What is it that we expect from our employees? What tasks need to get done and how do they need to get done? Are some tasks totally fine being done individually in a way that is asynchronous? What tasks need to be done synchronously with the team? You know, that may help us work better. We're, you know, we'll be able to work smarter uh, if we can figure that out, if we can use the pandemic experience, the work from home experience as a way to really identify what's important, what are our priorities, and what are our expectations about individual versus team-based work. If we can do that as leaders, use this as a natural experiment, that can allow us to leapfrog in terms of the types of productivity and you know, the work um, flexibility that we're able to offer in the workplace in the future. The ability to really connect both audio and video with our colleagues has really made, I think, a huge difference in terms of our ability to simulate being with everybody in the workplace. And so that that technology is, is enormously important. There's one piece that I want to point out about technology, though, and I think it's related to this issue. When I say the work from home has gone very smoothly for knowledge workers, you know, it's not the case for everybody, right? Some people's jobs really need to be in the workplace. Our grocery store workers, we need them in, in the grocery store. We need people in, you know, stocking the shelves. We need people, you know, ha you know we, we need people shipping us goods uh, to keep, you know, the, the, uh, the, the flow of food going, right? And so, and not to mention the toilet paper crisis that everybody's experiencing, right? <laughs> right. So the point is some jobs really don't lend themselves as easily to work from home and, it's also linked to socioeconomics, right? People who don't have internet, high-speed internet in their homes are experiencing this in terms of the public school crisis, in terms of the unevenness of people's access to technology. And that's creating a digital divide, which may be separating us even further. And that's, I think, a, a worry, a public policy worry that we just need to keep an eye on with this type of situation.